Welcome to the Splash Ass Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Quinley. This is the unofficial Jeff Lewis Live After Show. So, uh, the other day we were just talking about beavers killing little dogs. Because <laughs> that's what we do on the unofficial after show, okay? Circle back. You'll listen. You'll love it. Um, and then I woke up today to a video of an aggressive sea otter in California eating a surfboard. Riding on that surfboard. Yeah, no, it just, it kicked off the surfer and (laughs) started having some breakfast with microplastics, which I guess is what it's eating in the water anyway, every time it eats fish or anything, because us humans have just made we're we're plastic. Barbie is such a big thing right now. Life in plastic, it's fantastic. Yeah, guess what? We're all living in Barbie's world, okay? Because we've created Mother Earth into being plastic. So all I'm saying is that this um, sea otter, I guess it's happened a couple times in recent days where they're starting to get very aggressive towards the swimmers and surfers. And wildlife officials are bewildered at their behavior And I am bewildered by their bewilderment. Like, what the fuck, you guys? Do you know why the sharks are coming out in full swing? Why the whales are attacking? Why the bison are attacking? Why the beavers and, I was going to say ogres, otters, (laughs) otters. The ogres are coming too, I'm sure. Again, let me reiterate the fact that we have now turned our beautiful planet into Barbie's dream house. And unfortunately, that means it's all plastic. The animals are clearly revolting. They see that we have fucked shit up and they're taking it out on us. Like, no, you don't get to surf in the water anymore, Californians, okay? You fucked up the water, so now the otters get the surfboards, okay? Surf otters instead of sea otters. That's her new name. It's just wild to me. Like, the dinosaurs, they were in charge at one point allegedly I wasn't fucking there I can't verify were you uh but all I'm saying is that they were top of the food chain right now it's humans time to shine well it was it was and we are top of the food chain for now but our time is clearly near all I'm saying is that it's extremely apparent that the animals can sense how far we've gone and Again, we're about to be knocked out, and I know that we think it's by AI, but who knows? It could be all the goldfish of the world revolting at once. Probably. It won't. It's not going to be the goldfish. They're not going to be the top tier species. Unless they're listening, and now they heard me. I just motivated them, and they're like, fuck that bitch. Now, goldfish, unite. All right, guys. <laughs> Let's get into the July 12th episode of Jeff Lewis Live. We had Paula too. Bless you. We had Patrick Simpson. And we had Shane Dog. Bless. So Snow White 90210 is in a floral summer dress for today. <laughs> Got to dress your florals in proportion to your body, we learned. Big flowers hides big bellies. I don't know. Was that the thing? We go over how to dress if you want to look slim. Again, you all, you all can try your hardest to suck in and dress in layered clothing to cover that extra fluff. Fuck it. Fuck it for me. I am channeling pregnant girl summer. Even though I'm not pregnant, have zero plans to ever be, but I'm just saying pregnant girls have the most fun because they don't give a shit. They're growing a baby. They just need to concentrate on growing a healthy baby. And I want to not give a shit as I healthily grow my food baby. All right. So pass over the barbecue corn and the barnacle porn and you guys can have fun measuring your florals to your fluff. So Patrick's birthday was July 9th, even though he'll be celebrating all month. He's one of those, one of those people. (laughs) No, on whatever. Like, 
there's enough bad shit that goes on in the world. If you want to celebrate your birthday all fucking year, I'll eat cake. I'll eat cake, but I'm not going to buy it for you if you want to sell, you know, like if you're going to be one of those people, then you have to provide the activities. You can't just keep on having people throw you birthday parties, you know, like you get it. So um, Fortune, Fortune Feimster, who was on this week, her birthday was earlier this month and I remembered this on Fortune. Why didn't we sing the birthday song to her? And then when they said it was Patrick's birthday, I was like, why aren't we singing the birthday? Happy, happy birthday. Blah, 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 meow, 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 meow. Like, why aren't we doing that shit anymore? I used to fucking love that. In fact, you know how I went on a rant <laughs> the other day about the American cheers? Cheer, cheer. Fucking look me in the eye, bitch. Ah, clash, crack, crack. Okay. Buckle up, America, because I am not done with you yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not done. What I am done with is the dumb ass traditions that we all hate, but we do it anyways because no one wants to raise awareness on these issues. Uh, they all pretend like there's more important things to do or something. I don't give a fuck. I have nothing else more important to do than fight for the American birthday song. It is the most awkward thing when it's like, happy birthday to you. And then everybody gets quiet at like, happy birthday. And somebody always breaks a, you don't even need a cheers. People are breaking glasses just with their fucking voice alone. Grandma Pearl, shut the fuck up, Grams. Uh, yeah, your heyday's over and you lost your hearing, but we all still have ours and you sound like a fucking chicken that just got electrocuted. Sorry, love you, Graham. Um, but yeah, so I'm just saying that the like happy birthday it's so long and boring as fuck i think america we should combine together and we should all adopt the chili's birthdays happy it's so fun and clappy and just jo it's joyful so we want to have fun and there you go but again jeff why are you why'd you stop why'd you stop the celebrating let's bring back the joy okay bring back the joy paul poll poll God damn. I have to fucking write their names phonetically. I have to write which voice goes to which part because of Paul and Patricia. It just, they, they mesh together so well, even though they claim to be very different people. But I agree with Jeff. I think they're, they can be different people and have different interests and all that. But I think they are very much one unit as meshed together. And it's just like two halves of as they should be. They're adorable. We love them. Okay, and Paul, I just left a loving message for them on my podcast, but Paul left a loving message for Patrick on Instagram for his B-Day. Now, for, <laughs> for anybody that wants to do that for Splash of Sass podcast, just know that we officially don't have an Insta anymore. Fuck that shit. Fuck Insta. I deleted Instagram four years ago at the start of the pandemic, never been happier. And then I decided I had to have one to promote this podcast, but fuck it. I fuck it. I am. I'm happy if you like it. If you like it, please yeah, have the best time. I hate it. So we will figure out something. We'll figure something out. I don't know. TikTok, maybe. Oh, well, that's a weekend project. But for now, word of mouth. So I love you guys. I love you. Now, Paul is a psychic. Paul, um, he read Tracy Tudor's coffee cup a few weeks ago. They also randomly, the, it was so random to just toss out that Paul's a psychic, but then they also randomly toss out the fact that Tracy Tudor is Armenian? Armenian? What the fuck, you guys? I am fucking Armenian. Of course I am. <laughs> Of course I am. I know I look like an Irish bitch, but I am fucking more Armenian than I am Irish. And honestly, there aren't a lot of us left. There aren't a lot of us out there in the world, us Armenians, especially because of the whole genocide. Rest in peace to my ancestors. I mm, love you guys. Okay, so the current Armenians, we got to stick together. I just love Tracy even more now. And Maybe Jeff was like, I love Tracy even more too now that I know she's Armenian. I don't know what that means. I don't know why he loves Armenians, but hi, Jeff. Your fucking unofficial host is Armenian. So you can show us some fucking love too, bitch. Love you. Um, And I know that the Kardashian stands, they love to go hard and be like, the Kardashians are the best uh, reality Armenian, blah, blah, blah. No. I prefer Tracy Tudor to be the Armenian American reality star of choice. She is the Armenian's choice for American reality star. You got my vote, Trace.
Now, Paul predicted Frankison's relationship back when Frank was just a little shadow in his dad's sperm. Ew, ew, oh my God, I'm joking. No, just a shadow in Jameson's life. So Shane, Shane asks Paul for a reading. You guys, you guys, the entire studio just goes silent. <laughs> it's like when you walk into a room and everyone's like, and you're like, hey guys, what are you talking about? And they're just dead because they're like, bitch, we don't, we don't want to tell you. And I'm just like, like Paul kind of joked it off. Like, haha, Shane, I, I read you all the time. But no, there was way too many. There was too many milliseconds of silence. And I was like, something's wrong here. Something is wrong. Just like Oscar was an announcer, a stadium announcer, and Jeff asked him to announce something and he went silent. Now, Paul is claiming to be a psychic. Shane asks him to psych something and Paul goes silent. Like, what the fuck is up with people saying they can do shit and then they're not doing shit? Like, give the people what they want. I want Shane to get a fucking reading. I want to know what what's going to happen. I say the next time Paul and Patrick are on JLL, they got to do a live coffee cup reading for Shane. We need some redemption for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> because it makes me think that Paul sees something that he doesn't want to say. You know, and like you get your tarot card and the lady just like looks up at you with horror in her eyes and she's like, uh, oh, you're about to meet your soulmate. <laughs> and he's going to murder you in 49 days. But who's counting? <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts. So like with Paul, is Paul going to say like, actually, Shane? I see a dark shadow in your life too. And I I fear that the downfall of Frankison is going to be Shank. Shank, the Shawshank Redemption. Oh my, I just said Sh Shane's redemption. Shawshank Red Shane. Okay, as in Shane and Frank equal Shank. <laughs> or Frain. No, Shank. So um, I think that maybe Paul is seeing that Shane and Frank are going to meet up at some Trump event and it might be like a love at first sight, soulmate, emotional connection, demisexual moment, you know? And Paul doesn't want to hurt Jameson's feelings. So he's like, oh, Shane, uh, we'll read you another time. And instead he's going to pull Shane aside after the show today and be like, Shane, keep it in your motherfucking pants. Unlike everything that your dad Jeff Lewis has tried to teach you. So then they played a game on JLL. It was guessing 70 songs. Kind of tuned out. But I did notice that Patrick and Paul have a hilarious competitive banter. Oh my God, I love it. Like, again, they move as a unit, but this is, they can clash at the same time. We love, we need the, we need the angst mixed with the love, you know. But um, I just want to say that Patrick and Paul can totally be contestants on my new game show. Guys, I changed the title. It's called, drumroll please, One for the Generations. One for the Generations. I have a pitch meeting coming up, so I will let Patrick and Paul know if it is greenlit or if I will promise them they can be on my show and then ghost them like Pimp My Ride did to Jameson. Now on JLL, we might have outed Hugh Jackman. Uh, I, don't, I guess Patrick or Paul, one of them almost went home with him. They say that he's a Ken doll everyone wants. And I was like, Ken doll? What does he look like again? I had to Google him to refresh my memory. And oh my, uh, wait, first, okay, before people are like, you don't know who Hugh Jackman is? Who's Hugh is Hugh? Who's Hugh is Hugh? Who's Hugh is who? You guys, we can't know everything. We can't remember everything. Their life is way too overstimulated at this point. Like, I took a screenwriting class with the New York Film Academy, and the professor was so annoying. He was one of those people who was, like, very pretentious and, like, you've never seen Succession? It's the most magical masterpiece of written work. And it's like, shut the fuck. I watched it, and it's like Kendall being like, uh, 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 uh. And then little Macaulay Culkin, like, ah, I'm home alone. I'm home alone. And then the girl Shabira or whatever is just like, Ugh, I'm a ginger who wants to fuck me. La, da, 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 I want the money. 
or something like that. That's how succession went in my mind. But I was just like, every time he would always TV shame us and be like, you want to be writers and you've never seen this show. And I'm like, bro, I can literally turn on my TV right now and turn on 70 million shows. And every single one of those writers would think that it's the most amazing, you know, like shut the fuck. You're so just because everybody decides that one show's amazing. Doesn't mean it's amazing. Sorry, succession in my mind. You suck session. All I will say about Hugh Jackman, <laughs> circling back to Hugh, Hugh's Hugh is who? You guys, oh my, fu- you guys, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Hugh looks just like mother fucking Stew. <laughs> Who's Stew is Hugh? Who's who is Stew? Oh my, I swear when I looked it up, I was like, is that fucking Chef Stew's cousin or brother or something? Like, and then the fact that their names rhyme, Stew and Hugh, it's the same. Did you guys know that Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey, all right, all right, all right, allegedly might have the same mom? Like, well, they they do. Like, the mom is like, yeah, um, I think Woody's actually my son and life happened and we, he kind of got into a different family, but I'm pretty sure he's one of us. And then you look at them together and um, Matt and Hugh are the exact same person. Or not Hugh. Why did I just say Woody? Woody. So I think that Matt and Woody should do a movie with Hugh and Stu. <laughs> but we need to change Matt's name to like Muddy. Muddy and Woody and Hugh and Stu. And it can just be the three stooges plus a chef. I don't know. Guys, I already came up with a game show called One for the Generations. Do you know how iconic that is? I can't do everything, right? So Jeff is doing stem cells and PRP. He's trying to do everything cosmetically to himself. And he wants, this is hair shit. But okay, poll. Or Patrick, I believe it was Paul, has already done it. And he says it's wicked painful. Jeff will have to pop a Valium or Xanax or five, not just one. Anytime someone says take a Xanax, I just, <laughs> I am instantly thrown into a Ramona Singer flashback of take a Xanax. You need to calm down. Oh my God, she was so obnoxious, but in such an entertaining way. It's so annoying, but she was entertaining. Now, my concern with this stem cell, because I know Jeff really cares, but Paul was saying during his stem cell hair thing that he didn't have to shave his head. And I was like, what do you, do you normally have to? Like, is that normal that you do shave your head? Because you mentioned that it was cool that you didn't have to like is jeff lewis about to be a fucking baldy like are we about to get baldy lewis up in here and i i'm not hating love love hair love bald just be cute just be cute either way and jeff you would look adorable bald i would look like an alien but um, Jeff, you're definitely going to have to warn us if you walk in looking like you're about to head off for military basic training. So please. I know sometimes you like to spring things on us, but we cannot. We we could handle the tan. That was as far as it could go. We can't handle a shaved head with the tan and no um, time to mentally prepare. Also, though, Paul was saying like Patrick still it hurts when he grabs his hair during sex. And we kind of skimmed over that, but that, Jeff, that's an issue. That's an issue. Okay. So maybe if you get a wig, like, cause I just feel like Stu would be like aggressive and forget. Like he's, he's just like a, like a big, like what I was going to say an elephant, but elephants are very rememberful. What's up for, uh, he's a giant goldfish. We said goldfish in the beginning. Okay. Goldfish have horrible memories. So if, uh, Stu is an aggressive goldfish in bed and tries to tug on your hair with his sharp goldfish fins. What an awful example, but you get it. You get it. Like it's wear a wig. Jeff is all I'm trying to say. Doug Buden has been wearing wigs in these Instagram photos that I will no longer see. Cause fuck Instagram, fuck social media. Bye. Not for me. And I'm sure Doug was, not bringing these wigs in from home and or maybe he was but i'm sure they were at the sirius xm studio for some reason and honestly jeff spent the entire episode talking about how patrick and paul are grifters and con artists and looters and all that and especially at their place of employment um jeff 
maybe you should do the same. Maybe you should actually do that too and loot the wigs and take them home with you and wear them during your recovery so Stu doesn't accidentally rip out your plugs and make you bleed all over bed when you're trying to get a blowy. No bleeding for blowies. That's our new motto. Pregnant girl summer, don't bleed for blowies. (laughs) What the fuck is this podcast? I don't know, but I love it. So a caller asked for marriage advice and Patrick says, keep it fun. Yes, always keep it fun. Great fucking motto, Patrick. We very much agree over here at Splash of Sass. That's all we want to fucking do is have some fun with a happy, happy birthday from all our friends to you. Okay, everybody, stay fucking fun, stay unofficial, and have the best day ever. We will be back with more Jeff Lewis Live recaps tomorrow. There's no social media for you to go follow, so fuck it all. Tell people if you want. If not, I just love you. I just fucking love you. That's all I want from you is just to, I don't want anything from you. I just want to give you fake love from afar. Bye. Splash, splash, splash. Splash your sass, splash your sass.